Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel Nasrit Padasale. So in this video, we'll be discussing the answer key for those questions that has been asked in this joint CSER UGC NET June 2021 examination. So in this video, I'll be discussing the answer key for those questions that has been asked in morning shift and in upcoming videos, definitely I'll be uploading the answers for evening shift. So without any delay, let's get into the video. So the first question is from developmental biology which type of cleavage is found in humans or mammals so the correct answer is holoblastic rotational cleavage so you can find this particular question as an easy thing because in developmental biology book you can find a tabulated column only that particular table alone study you can definitely score four marks because at least one question will be asked from the cleavage unit so please do refer Gilbert book for developmental biology alone or else you can refer the PubMed articles also so that there are very, there are different articles has been available, okay. Next question is with respect to plant physiology in predidophytes, the dominant phase is what? Okay, so the correct answer for this particular question is diploid sporophyte in with respect to this petridophytes they have an alteration in generation so this petridophytes they generally follow a haplodiplontic cycle so if you studied from pathfinder book then definitely you can clear friends because in pathfinder book i think in you in book number one volume number one you can study about this particular classification because uh, only msc botany students can answer this particular question but that's a false statement friends if you are either a zoology student or if you are a biotechnology student or if you are a microbiology student also you can clear this particular exam question that has been asked from plant physiology by referring plant uh, book only that is um, with respect to this um, pathfinder book the correct answer is diploid sporophyte because at this particular diploid condition only the pedrophytes will be dominant stage of life cycle and there are sporophyte and gametophyte Sporophyte, they generally produce spores through meiosis and this gametophyte, they form a gametes by mitosis. Okay. So, the next question, which of the following statement about tracheids and angiosperm is true? Okay. So, you should know this tracheids is nothing but a type of cell found in the xylem. And these tracheids are generally primitive. Okay. And these tracheids are generally a dead cell since they don't have any protoplasm in them. And what is the function of these tracheids? They generally transport water as well as mineral from the roots to stem and leaves okay and this tracheids are generally found in all category of vascular and they are present in gymnosperm angiosperm and predidophytes and with respect to angiosperm and in gymnosperm the structure of tracheids will vary so that's what the explanation i had given so with respect to angiosperms they are recognized by the presence of simple pits and they don't have any scleriform thickening or else they don't have the preparation plate whereas with respect to tracheids in gymnosperm they don't have this simple pits but then they do possess this clariform thickenings and the border pits and preparation pits okay and also the correct answer for this question is that presence of simple pits because in angiosperms they don't have any thickenings or they don't have any preparation plates or they don't have any border pits next question is an again an interesting question friends at which initial stage of an embryo of angiosperm abaxial and adaxial is determined so i just referring you this article so you can refer this article that is published on genesis and also this article that has been published on canadian science public commission okay so with respect to correct answer is the global art stage okay so first i can explain you this adaxial and abaxial polarity is determined only with respect to the sum Thumb is nothing but shoot apical meristem. Okay. And those cells that are present close to the thumb will differentiate into the adiaxial domain. Okay. And those that are far from the shoot apical meristem will form a abaxial cell. Okay. So that will be different. So if you take any leaf, both the leaves, upper part and lower part. Okay. So upper part will signify this adiax, uh, abaxial cell and lower part will signify the adaxial cell. So at this globular stage only, this particular stage differentiation will occur. So why I am saying means you do refer, please students, you refer this particular article that is available in PubMed also. So I just provided you a PubMed ID and also the DOA number that was published in 2021 only. So you know from after seeing all those article references, I thought that referring to, instead of referring to textbook, you students after 
studying any concept please do refer the articles which are published with respect to that particular concept say if you are studying mitochondrial respiration means please do refer what are the recent article that has been published just read the title alone or is try to read abstract and try to get a essence because ccr in upcoming days or upcoming years definitely questions will be at research level only so uh, a round preclinical division give rise to 16 cell stage called globular stage and during this particular stage only the stout meristem will be produced as a result as i mentioned earlier this polarity will be differentiated based on the position of the stout apical meristem so once the sam has been developed and then the next position polarity will be desired so the sam meristem will be generally produced during the 16 cell stage which is a globular stage so this statement i had taken from that book only so if you want so sorry, sorry this paper only if you want you can refer from this paper next is the genetic problems and in inheritance biology every year csr will ask only uh, problem that are really tough but this time it is a easy problem so i don't know whether the question is easy or whether this is a memory based question i don't know full question but let me clarify you calculate the penetrance of a gene if 38 out of 42 persons are polydactyls okay so this crude penetrant penetrant estimates okay it can estimate them by dividing the observed number of deceased individual okay by the number of obligate carrier that is normal person so with respect to this problem 38 persons are in affected with this polydactyl so they might have extra limb okay and 40 so totally 42 persons are there so you need to divide 38 by 42 so 38 is the number of people divide disease and 42 is the total number of carriers okay so if you divide you will get this particular thing and you need to multiply them with 100 okay so the correct answer is 90.5 so these type of question this is uh, there is no ngt type of questions in csa so they might give problems answer so i think the correct option you should tick in 90.5 okay so in this particular paper you can refer more about this penetrance and formula for penetrance everything friends this was published on genetics and molecular biology this was published on 2012 you can refer if you want more and also now to estimating penetrance in plus one paper i found a there is an app called calpen c a l p e n in this in that app we can uh, calculate penetrance of any deceased individual by applying formula okay it is a problem it is a app like of thing we can if you want you can check those things also so the next question is match the cancer tissue type given in column one along with the tissue type in which they occur given in column two so with respect to this particular thing i can suggest you to refer one only one uh, so all uh, if you are taking notes of with for cancer because cancer is an important topic friends definitely at least five to ten marks will be asked from this cancer topic okay so for that uh, after reading your book you just refer this particular website the, called cancer.gov this is an officially under the control of this national institute of health okay so this is the easiest question lymphoma cancer will originate from glands and nodes of lymphatic system sarcoma from the supporting tissue or connective tissue leukemia from bone marrow or blood cell carcinoma is from epithelial so this is a correct answer please do please do check with your answers also next question is that this is from unit number 13 so with respect to unit number 13 as i mentioned in our previous video you no need to study all the technique mathematical terms or physiological terms or chemical terms just need to know what is the technique game and what for what purpose the technique in use and what are the components that are present simply if you read through the diagram itself you can easily understand so with respect to 2d structure there is three dimensional structure can be predicted using your uh, nmr technique and with respect to ion charge that is a isoelectric affinity chromatography that is ion charge chromatography generally uses this isoelectric affinity and with respect to binding affinity affinity chromatography is used and with respect to molecular size the ultra filtration that is ultra filtration technique generally employs this molecular size for the purification of protein molecules so these questions are not with respect to csar standard test these questions are with respect to gate standard so if you student are preparing for both for gate and csa then, uh, then there are many possibility for you to clear both both the exams if you are serious in your preparation okay and also those students who are only depending upon csr please do refer gate question paper also because if i refer all the question that has been asked for the csr many questions from gate exams has been repeated since i had i made analysis of question asked from gate exam also and i do refer the question paper asked in this particular year for gate examination i don't know many question has been repeated okay next is with respect to 
this is ultimately i think only 10 to 12 percentage of students for those students who are msc botany candidate alone will attempt this question so match the plan group given in column number one along with the family given in column number two okay so basil and your song belong to this infasia family and this laments belong to Solanaceae family that is your tomato and potato and Malweeds that they belong to this Brachiaceae family that is your mustard family and Fabids that belong to Cucubitaceae that is your cabbage and cauliflower. Okay, so this is a pure, pure uh, MSc botany students alone can attempt this question. If you didn't attempt then please don't uh, worry because uh, in plant biotechnology if you take there will be 50 percentage of question that will be pure of the botany side and 50 percentage will be helpful for other technique like agrobacterium mediated transmission like that. And this is some question number nine that is with respect to value of recessive homozygous genotype frequency is given calculate the homozygous dominant frequency and the correct option is our answer is 0 0.9 is the correct option so this here they are asked from this cardi Weinberla. i think you all know people p plus q is equal to 1 so they had given a p that is homozygous genotype frequency has been sorry q has been given so p is equal to 1 minus 0 0.04 then they are asking only the homozygous dominant genotype which is the frequency of homozygous genotype is p square so you need to multiply 0 0.96 into 0 0.96 so these questions i think you can find these questions in our 12 standard zoology book if you refer the 12 standard zoology book last few pages this problem have been given detailed so please do refer the zoology book also in upcoming days okay so in upcoming years of examination please do refer zoology book lavard center zoology book 12 center zoology book and with respect to botany also you can refer lavard center botany book and lavard center zoology book and also you can refer ncrt books also because from that books and all if you go through the activity page there will be many problem and i think csr has copied many things from that particular problems only so if you are refer about those problem and if you practice those questions then definitely you too can clear csr next question is that which of the following ligand is not a rkt ligand okay so Arcade is nothing but receptor thyroidism kinases. I think this is an, again an important topic and I, I think many big YouTube channel has made a video with regarding to this receptor thyroidism kinases. So these are enzyme linked receptor and they are located and they will be located on the plasma uh, plasma membrane. Okay, and these receptor will have an extracellular ligand binding domain, transmembrane domain and an intracellular protein tyrosine domain. Okay, and respect to ligands of this RKT that I had previously mentioned, it have an extracellular ligand binding domain. So, the ligands of this RKT are your IGF, that is insulin growth factor, epidermal growth factor, platelet derived growth factor and FGF. So, with respect to EGF, yes, it is a ligand. With respect to PDF, which is a plas, uh, which is a platelet derived growth factor, yes, it is also a ligand. And with respect to insulin, which is an insulin growth factor, it is also a ligand. And with this glycoprotein is an odd one out. So, the correct answer is the glycoprotein, which is not a ligand for the RKT pathway. Next is which of the following is so with respect to this particular thing I can you can refer this particular paper friends. So it has been published on 2011 under the under the paper called cell. So it has been published by Mark E. Limon that is cell signaling by receptor thyrosine kinases. Okay. The next question is that which of the following is not not usually used in laser confocal microscope. So you need to refer only the diagram and first thing is that yes laser is used and next thing detector is used and next thing pin hole is used. So, if you want more detailed clarity, then do refer this particular thing, friends. So, confocal microscopy principle and modern practices. So, you can refer this particular paper. So, it has been published only on this 2021 year and that will be a diagram. So, here you can find that there will be a laser source and detector and pin code. But in that diagram, you cannot find the CCC. CCD. But if you are a student who are working in laboratory and if you are doing a PhD or if you are a JRF, then you might know in our confocal microscope, we will be fixing a CD, CCD, which is nothing but charge coupled device. So CCD is nothing but a camera that only will uh, capture all the images and so that we can uh, give a uh, overview of in a, in a system itself, it, it will show all the diagrams. So, I think all the four will be a component of uh, confocal microscope, but this particular thing is not a component. I think this might be a thing that is not usually used in laser confocal microscope. Only the correct answer key or the question has been released. I can definitely do upload that particular questions also. Next thing, which animal is generally called as ghost of mountain? And so, ghost of mountain means the snow leopards. If you refer internet, it is really looking like a ghost only because this snow leopard, as mentioned for the name, will be found in the Himalayan range. So, everything will be in snow, covered by snow. This leopard eyes alone is showing. So, that's how this particular thing is called as ghost of mountain. Next thing, what is the CO2 emission in respect to 2020 year? 
this is again only a limited number of students has been uh, will be applied for this quest type of question and this type of question what it says that you should refer uh, internet or you should refer hindu papers and you do refer about with respect to what are the biological term like co2 emission green gas global gas like that you should collect all those information if you are really passionate about this ecr examination so the correct option is there are 2411.17 million tons of the co2 has been emitted in 2020 and which protein is used for nuclear targeting? So again, I'm saying this. We are asking for this nuclear targeting of protein size, and also those protein for larger than 50 kilodalton. So again, the stim and tom. Okay. So translocase for inner mitochondrial membrane and translocase for outer mitochondrial membrane. They are generally used for the transporting protein for mitochondria. Here they are asking for nuclear targeting, and also with respect to the sick. Uh, sec 61 which is used for transporting protein to endoplasmic reticulum. So, the correct answer is here important proteins. Okay. So, this important proteins are generally used for nuclear targeting and also for pro those proteins who are having a size larger than 50 kilo delta. And match the basic unit of secondary metabolites. So, phenolics, redpins, alkaloids and cyanogen glycoside. Again and again saying secondary metabolites and this time only they are asking ECS question and every time you can find this phenolics word, if terpins word, alkaloids were involved in a question paper. If you not, you can refer also. So, the correct option is that phenolics contains the aromatic ring OH group and the terpins will have isoperin unit. So, based on number of terpin, uh, isoperin unit, they are classified into monoterpin, diterpin, sesquiterpin. And with respect to this alkaloid, alkaloids generally have only one nitrogen atom, whereas the cyanogenic glycoside contain nitrogen containing compound that may be one or main. Next question What kind of structure is produced by conversion evolution? So, the correct option is here analogous structure. So, analogous structures are nothing but they are produced by this conversion evolution. So, the two type of evolution phase one is conversion and another one is divergence. So, conversion evolution will give rise to analogous structure. Analogous structure is nothing but similar trait arise independently in unrelated groups. So, let me clarify with you with an example. So, we can take wings of bird and wings of insects. Both are completely different groups. If you take bats, they belong to uh, mammal whereas if you take insects they are completely different so bat wing <coughs> bat wings evolved from a mammalian forelimb in last 70 million years whereas insect wings are though evolved from the gill like appendages from fish over 300 million years so the correct option is analogous structure next thing which part of the mrna is not used for rnai technology so respect to rnai technology first i'm suggesting you this paper it has been published on 2019 under this comprehensive bio, bio, biotechnology so this rna interface is nothing but it's a biological process of mrna degradation so it's a kind of this post transcriptional uh, gene regulation okay uh, it, it has been widely used and it leads to the transla translation depression phase. it's a completely different technology and it's an easy technology so don't uh, don't think that these fancy words are being difficult so in this particular technology there is sirna is also being used and also microRNA is also being used okay and next paper is with respect to this particular paper and let me suggesting you so with respect to this particular thing introns is used and the steed as utr is used whereas the spider as utr is not involved so you take out to which part of the mrna so mrna consists of intron and exon introns they don't code for any protein and exons they do code for many functional protein and with respect to five dash untranslated region and the three dash untranslation region only in this three dash utr your dizer protein will bind okay and the correct option is that this five dash utr which is is not used for the RNA technology and for those who don't call still doubting with respect to intron here there's a paper that has been published on 2006 in journal of biomed biotechnology intronic microRNA so numerous of these non-protein coding encode this microRNA which are responsible for RNA mediated gene silencing through RNA interface so I think this guy provided you a valid evidences for those students who are telling me introns are also not used okay Next, match the plant with this character. So, this is again a purest form of plant, uh, plant uh, botany period. So, if you refer your 11th standard botany book, you can find answers. So, liver watch is again a single cell rhizome. It's a unicellular rhizome, whereas mosses is a multicellular rhizome. Okay. And with respect to liver watch, stomata is not even present in liver watch. So, mosses, stomata is present on sporophytes and respect to liver wart in liver wart gametophyte stage is a dominant phase again this liver wart horn warts are belong to the haplodiploidic stage they will shift the generation there will be one generation that means sporophyte another generation will be gametophyte sporophyte will like give rise to spore by meiosis gametophyte will give rise to gametes by mitosis next formation of thyroglobulin in form of I form of which 
whether it is formed by iodine or whether it is formed by reduced iodine or whether it is formed by iodine. Uh, oxidase iron. So, for that, I am just suggesting you to read this particular book, Thyroid Hormonal Synthesis by Bernard Rosette. Okay, it has been published on 2015. So, you can refer this book. So, in this book, if you refer figure number 2.2, so it's a PubMed article only. Okay, so iodine cycle, they had given an entire diagram. So, far, based, I think I am not uh, interested in take some other work to get projected over here. Maybe in upcoming videos, if you are doing any detailed analysis, definitely I do share. Iodine cycle, the ingested iodine that is from salt that we are intaking is trapped in a thyroid gland and then they will go through a process of this oxidization. So, they will go through the process of the oxidization. So, I think thyroglobulin are formed from oxidized iodine, not from reduced iodine. Okay. So, here you can read entire thing. So, here I had given you a proof. Next thing is easiest question. Psychrophile means extreme cold, hypothermophile high temperature. Alkalophile means high alkalinity, halophile means high salinity. I think you students are very lucky because CSA are all generally set up this question. This question is not with respect to CSA assigned with respect to gauge standard. Next is an important question. Cancer cell generally have mutation, whereas cancer stem cells will not have mutation. Cancer cells can renew while cancer stem cells cannot renew. This full question I need to have. Only then I can give you a full explanation. But then I am suggesting you this book. Dynamic of Cancer Incident Inheritance and Evolution. In chapter 13 you can read. And also this paper. So with respect to cancer cells and cancer stem cells. Cancer stem cells are nothing but they give rise to tumor initiating cells. And this tumor initiating cells will give rise to cancer cells. So, both the cancer cells and cancer stem cells will do have a mutation. Respect to cancer stem cells, if mutation has been occurred in stem cell, then all the progeny or all the descendants from stem cells will have a mutation. Okay, both the cells will have a mutation. With respect to cancer cell can renew and cancer stem cells cannot renew. No, this is also a false statement. So, we need to wait for the official question paper prints. Only then we can make an enough analysis of all those things. What is the nature of tumor cells? So, again to refer this particular thing, you can refer uh, cancer.go website. So, this tumor cells they generally ignore cells. So, they generally ignore signals from any group of cells. So, that is the reason why they are keep on projecting. They will not look on signal to stop the cell division or they do not look on a signal to undergo, to undergo process of program cell. And also other options are definitely wrong. They are saying occur only in blood. No, tumor cells can occur in any part of the body and this tumor cells, yes, they undergo chromosomal stain and they generally grow in the presence of signal. No, they do. They they generally ignore signal and they does not grow in the presence of signal. Next is about this glucocorticoid receptor. So, this receptor they generally bind to the membrane receptor. So, I think if you read this mini review, the title of the mini review says rapid glucolide signaling via membrane associated receptor. So, these glucocorticoid receptor they bind with the membrane associated receptor and then they are activating a G protein in receptor and then they will go for this intracellular signaling pathway. So, the correct option is membrane receptor. Which protein regulates activity of helicase during DNA replication initiation process. So, there are three processes in DNA replication. Initiation, replication, termination. Okay. So, the correct option is CDC45. So, if you refer this class 1 article, here CDC45 is called as helicase activating protein. So, ultimately the correct option is CDC45. So, in the next video, I will continue the same video friends because if I place all the answer for this question, then it will be a lengthy video. So, in the next video, definitely I will just upload many questions. So, that's all for today's video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that we can grow together. For your support is much more important for me. So, don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel.